can you sort of describe uh, what a pimp basically is today, what it was for you, but what it is and what it's not uh, compared to the Hollywood films? Right. Yeah, that was a really great point that you brought up because a lot of times what we see depicted in films are what we refer to as like the gorilla pimp. And so that's someone who uses brute force um, and violence to intimidate and threaten their victims. And we certainly see that. That absolutely does exist. That is happening. But when you're thinking about it from, you know, in terms of what's actually more effective in terms of brainwashing and manipulating vulnerable people, those tactics aren't the most effective. And so what we're, we see more often are what we call Romeo pimps. And these are people, these are pimps who use the promise of romance and love and relationship to manipulate. A lot of times, like in my case, there were abusive elements to it. There was definitely emotional abuse. There was physical abuse. But that's not the primary tool of manipulation that he used with me. He used this Romeo pimping tactic. And so when my husband and I go into juvenile detention centers and we work with young girls, many of whom are in there that are in relationships with pimps that are being trafficked and exploited, in their experience, they're in love with these men. They can't wait to get out of juvie to go back and be with them again because they have been sold this bill of goods and this lie that it's them against the world and they're the only person who loves them and they couldn't make it without them and they couldn't survive without them. And we as, as victims really begin to believe that. And, um, you know, there's all these other elements to it, like really with this kind of dynamic, like my identity was wrapped up in his view and perspective of me. But there are certain brainwashing technique, techniques and tactics that they use actually so that they begin to define who you are and your identity. And then on top of it, there's another form of um, pimping and exploiting that my friend Rachel Thomas, she coined this term and it's CEO pimps. And essentially, these are people who use the promise of career and success to manipulate victims. And we see this a lot, especially in big metropolitan cities like Los Angeles, Atlanta, New York, like place, Florida, Miami, places where there's an entertainment industry. And a lot of times what they'll say is like, oh, I can get you in. I can get you jobs. I can help you break in. You're going to be famous. You've got what it takes. You're beautiful. You could be a model. I'm a manager. I'm a, you know, I'm a, an agent, whatever. And even sometimes in certain situations, we'll give them, get them legitimate work in these industries to kind of like rope them in even further, but all the while with the um, intention of exploiting them. And so I know of women who got on, you know, a bus to come to LA for her big break in the modeling career because this guy said he was someone who would help her break in. And they, I mean, it's awful. We'll do, some of them will do things like drug them and rape them and film it and use the footage as blackmail. Um, others will just, you know, get them to be indebted to them. Like, oh, I paid for your photo shoot. I paid for your flight. I paid, you owe me now. You have to do this and this and this to pay me because now you're indebted to me. So there's all these different kind of tactics that exploiters use. And it's not as narrow as Hollywood portrays it to be. And I think one of the things that's hard and dangerous about that is that because young girls might think, oh, well, that's what a pimp looks like. They don't realize, like I didn't realize that I was actually being pimped and I was being exploited because I thought, well, a pimp has a, you know, looks like this and dresses like that and behaves this way. And that was not the case. 